Welcome back to UPSC Essentials of the Indian Express. I am Manas Srivastava. We are going to start from where we left. Remember we were talking about union budget. In the last video where you were live with me, we talked about union budget, we talked about general facts, and then we talked about two important priorities or two of the seven pillars or the Saptarishi of the Union Budget 2023-2024. Today I'm going to take you forward from there. What are we going to do today? Today, in this present video, we are going to focus on three priorities, which is priority three, priority four, and priority five of the budget document. Now, my advice to you will also be that you go back to the previous you know, video where you were there with us and try to revise what you have done till now. From this video onwards, whatever MCQ I will discuss, I'll also tell you the answer because I felt that a few students needed a answer to the MCQ. So when we go to the different slides, we are going to uh, solve that MCQ also. So let's begin, if you, your permission is there with me. And remember, don't forget to comment, to pose your doubts or whatever questions or queries you have. I'll try to answer all your queries, again, in the comment box. And also you can mail me whenever you feel like. So let us start. So in today's uh, video, we are going to first talk about the priority three. Remember again, we have done two priorities. We have done priority which talked about inclusiveness, okay, where we have agriculture, health and skill and development. And the second priority which talked about the last mile development. Now we are going to talk about this priority three. Now the budget talks about this priority three, but before that, let me take you to a question. This question is related to the priority three. So I'm not going to give you an answer right now. Once you will do the priority three, we will come back to this question again. But I want you all to answer this. Try to attempt at least, make an attempt, okay? Uh, be that brave and courageous and try to attempt this question. So this is related to priority three, but what does it say? With reference to the union budget, that is the budget which is presented recently, Consider the following statements. So you have to consider the following three statements. There are not two, but three statements. What is the first statement? It talks about capital investment outlay is being increased to rupees 10 lakh crore, which would be 3.3% of the total GDP. So the first statement talks about the capital investment and it says that the investment has increased one second to an amount of 10 lakh crore, that is the second point, and third, 3.3% of GDP. Now sometimes in the exams, though UPSC generally does not ask around figures, they might only stop till increase, but sometimes they might ask you certain, you know, whole number of figures. That's why I mentioned here in this question. So you should remember also because there's a lot of stress on capital investment. Okay, so the, because of these two reasons, you should, uh, this point is there mentioned in the, as a first statement of the MCQ. The second statement of the MCQ, please pay attention to it. It says, establishing new infrastructure finance secretariat for state government investment. So the second statement basically wants to say that uh, there will be a, you know, a finance secretariat for all those projects, all those uh, infrastructure projects in which the state government take the responsibility or the state government is the stakeholder. So this is the second statement. The third statement is that railways receive the highest ever capital outlay. So this is a, you know, kind of a general statement, but is it relevant to the budget or not? We have to find out. Now, so these are the three statements on your left hand side. I'm sorry, on your right hand side of the screen. Now, you have to just pay attention to each statement. Let's give it a wild try if you have not read the budget yet. Okay, because that's my task to take you through. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about these points in the coming slides, but just a wild guess. Which of these statements is are correct? One only, two and three only, three only, one and three only. So these are four options. First statement talks about capital investment, 
second about infrastructure finance secretariat and third about the railways receiving the highest ever so these are the three statements and then you have the options so don't waste time if you know the answer pin down your answer pin down your answer if you do not know try to make a wild guess and see if the options fit in your answer we will come back to this question once we see what is priority three so the priority three of the budget or this uh, one of the priorities or the pillars of the Saptarishi of the Amrit Kal talks about infrastructure and investment okay obviously no budget is uh, complete without talking about the infrastructure and the investment in the infrastructure sector now here there are two three points on the slide and I think all these slides all these points are important because investment is directly proportional or the infrastructure I'm sorry infrastructure is directly proportional to economic growth okay so that is how uh, the budget plans to address this particular point the first point which is highlighted on the screen is capital investment as driver of growth and jobs now if you remember in the very first video which we did I talked about that how the focus the one of the visions is about jobs about employment so this particular capital investment is focusing not only on the growth of the country or the growth of the economy but also jobs so these are the two important things linked to capital investment so capital investment outlay is being increased to rupees 10 lakh crore which would be 3.3 percent of GDP I remember one of the uh, aspirant or a student and a viewer asked me a question last time and he asked me that how is this 3.3 percent of GDP calculated so how this percentage is calculated out of the total GDP so uh, we talked to the experts and I figured out that it's a general answer there any one of you know how this percentage is calculated of GDP can comment in the box I will definitely you know answer and try to solve the question of the uh, of my friend or the viewer who asked this question last week so this 10 lakh crore which would be 3.3 percent of GDP it aims for the growth and jobs so this you have to remember then there is an effective capital expenditure now see this is capital investment or in, in, in expenditure this is effective capital e expenditure now by the name itself it tells us that any capital investment or expenditure which is done in an area which gives the maximum growth to the country okay now but what is the specific definition of effective capital expenditure any any idea about it but I've given you a clue that you know it it contributes to maybe to the most of uh, the growth of the country now it has been budgeted at 4.5 percent of GDP now this these figures are important these percentages are important okay uh, for not only for your prelims but when you want to talk about capital investment or in terms of infrastructure uh, development if you give these data the pinpointed data in your answers it these are brownie points okay these are points which will uh, take you to a better your answers will appear better than many of your uh, competitors the third point here is support to state governments for capital investment so the for, for for capital investment there is going to be a support to state government because there are a lot of worries with the state government that they do not get the fund from the center uh, but the government says in the budget that continued the 50 year interest free loan to state government so there will be no interest charged okay uh, for 50 years and uh, uh, for one more year in fact 50 plus 1 with a significantly enhanced outlay of rupees 1.3 lakh crore so this is a support for the capital investment uh, to the state government which the budget is providing so this is something which you should remember there is a support to state government then there is an effective capital expenditure note down this 4.5 percent of GDP and then 3.3 percent of GDP in the capital investment which is aimed as not only as economic growth but also for creation of jobs then you have enhancing opportunities for private investment in infrastructure 
Now, this is interesting, because if you remember, the MCQ talked about this point, but there we said to the state governments, but it is actually the investment, private investment in the infrastructure, that means to the private companies, to the private partners. So establishing new infrastructure finance secretariat. So new in, in, uh, inter infrastructure finance secretariat will be formed, which will benefit the private infra investment in infrastructure. And what is it going to include? It is included in railways, roads, urban infrastructure, and power. So kehne ka matlab ye hai ki jo private companies hain, unko unke liye ek finance secretariat banaya ja raha hai, so that they can more invest where in railways, roads, urban, and urban infrastructure and power. So their you know, uh, contribution or their, it can be eased out, okay? There can be easy uh, contribution, easy participation through this infrastructure finance secretariat. Okay, this is something which is interesting to remember. Then you have harmonized master list of infrastructure. So there's going to be a list of infrastructure and it will be reviewed by an expert committee to become suitable for Amrit Kal. So for the next coming years, if we have entered the Amrit Kal, this is the first budget of Amrit Kal. So there will be a harmonized master list for infrastructure. So you see so much stress on infrastructural development. So you've seen so many points related to infrastructure and you should make a like, key note of it. Remember the points which I have highlighted, you can at least remember those for your exams point of view. Then we talk about railways. Now, remember, there was this point in the MCQ, and that is why I mentioned that MCQ in the beginning of priority three, so that when you read the slide, you can guess the answer. And now probably you can note down or comment your answer below. So a capital outlay of rupees 2.40 lakh crore is the highest ever outlay. This is the highest ever given to railways. Then come to the logistics. 100 critical transport infrastructure projects for the last and first mile connectivity of ports, coal, steel, fertilizers, food grain sectors have been identified. So they have been, they've already been identified these 100 critical transport infrastructure projects. Now understand the important because see, these, these things, you know, fertilizers, coal, which is heavy, steel, all these things are there as resources in our country. One of the problems is the transportation of these uh, material, okay, these resources. So there have been uh, these 100 critical transport infrastructure projects which have been recognized. Another important point is about regional connectivity. Now remember in the past there have been various schemes related to regional connectivity. One which I can remember is related to airports, you know, and uh, that is the scheme Uran, okay. Now what happened to that scheme, we have to figure out, but there has been something mentioned about regional connectivity, which is 50 additional airports, helicopters, water aerodrome, and advanced landing grounds will be revived for improve, improving regional air connectivity. So things have been done, things are being you know, planned in a way so that regional, various regions in the heartland, in the borderland can be connected, can be connected through air connectivity. Then you have coastal shipping, and for the coastal shipping, the government takes up the PPP model, that is public-private partnership model. So uh, to uh, further the development of the coastal shipping area, uh, we will have PPP model. Now see, these seems to be like, might be a little boring to you, these topics, but remember, these are the points which are going to be the fodder for your mains answer. You can't write an answer without facts. Okay, your articulation is based on these facts. Okay, so these are certain things which the budget tells us and that is what you have to keep in mind. Okay, so I have like summarized, we have summarized it for you. Uh, this is the least which you could do. Now we have another important uh, mention in the budget that is sustainable cities for tomorrow. Remember, sustainable cities for tomorrow. There is something called smart cities this is sustainable cities for tomorrow. And what does it say? It says states and cities will be encouraged to undertake urban planning reforms and actions. So it says that the states and the cities of those states, the union, uh, union government or the, through the union budget will encourage 
these states to develop certain sustainable cities for tomorrow. Now, another important point here which you should always remember is about the municipal bonds. Now, these municipal bonds can be formed in the form of prelims questions also. So you can read more about municipal bonds or maybe uh, any wise mind can comment below that what are these municipal bonds. Here I have mentioned or here as mentioned in the budget, making cities ready for municipal bonds through property tax governance reforms and refencing user charges on urban infrastructure. So what is it, what is it aiming at? It's aiming that these cities these, uh, these cities which will be the sustainable cities of tomorrow should be prepared for something called municipal bonds. Okay, And there has to be a lot of reforms honestly to be done in the area of uh, property tax Okay, and these governance reforms have to be done. So the aim is there. Now let's come to this priority. Again there is Urban Infrastructure Development Fund and all this we are discussing by the way under the heading of infrastructure and investment. So priority three is infrastructure and investment. So there's going to be Urban Infrastructure Development Fund. So a lot of funds announced. This is one of the funds. It will be established to use of priority sector lending shortfall. Now what are the priority sectors? How many priority sectors has India or the Indian government recognized? Okay, so this is another very important question to think about. Priority sector lending shortfall. This will be managed by the National Housing Bank for creation of urban infrastructure in tier two and tier three cities. So in the tier two and tier three cities, urban infrastructure you know, will be identified, will be promoted, will be created. And what is going to help in that is this urban infrastructure development fund. And as I said, priority sector lending should be something where your eye should be glued that what is this priority sector lending. Very important question for the perspective of examination. Then you have urban sanitation. Uh, you know the scheme uh, which is related to sanitation. Can you just uh, uh, comment in the box below which is that scheme which we are talking about? Urban sanitation. Now it says that 100% mechanical disludging of septic tanks, sewers, manhole to machine hole mold. So, in, a, in short, what it's talk, talking about that, you know, the problem of uh, sanitation and sanitation workers, okay? Uh, so don't remember, don't forget that, you know, we are talking also about the safety of those people involved in sanitation work. So that is going to be the focus and there has to be a scientific management of the dry and wet waste, okay? So these are the things, you know, which UPSC might pick up. Okay, these are not very general things, or maybe they are general, but they're specific, okay, which needs attention. And as a future bureaucrats, you should, you should know about these things. There has to be a scientific management of dry and wet waste. Okay, as promised, we come back to this particular MCQ, and I should have hidden this answer before talking about, but since it's visible to you, we can say, uh, we can see this question again and now you should know the answer. So with reference to the union budget, consider the following statement. That was the question. There were three statements. The first statement was about capital investment, which has been increased to rupees 10 lakh crore, which would be 3.3% of GDP. This is the first statement. The second statement is establishing new infrastructure finance, secretariat of state government's investment. So th that is the second statement said that the infrastructure finance secretariat is mainly for the state government investment, which is wrong. It is for the private sector, mainly focusing on private sectors. And the third is railway received the highest ever capital outlay. Yeah, but it's not, it's true. Okay, that's written in the budget itself. So if we see these three statements, analyze the options, as some of you have answered correctly, the correct answer is D. That is the second statement is wrong. So automatically the first and the third are correct. So you see this kind of practice will help you in understanding budget. So we, we take our MCQ, we go through a, uh, the priority segment and then when we solve the question as per our knowledge. So you get a revision also, okay? The immediate retention, retention and immediate revision. Let's come to the another question before going to the next priority. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, system today. We will, before taking up a priority sector, we'll talk about an MCQ. So with reference to union budget, consider the following statements. First, 
आधार विल बी यूज एज दी कॉमन आइडेंटिफायर फॉर ऑल डिजिटल सिस्टम ऑफ स्पेसिफाइड गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज सो बेसिकली इट्स टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस डॉक्यूमेंट कॉल आधार एवरीबडी नोज अबाउट आधार गुड बट एज द बजट टॉक अबाउट इट Yes, the budget says that Aadhaar will be used as the common identifier of all of for all digital systems of specified government agencies. Well, my tone of the voice should give you a clue, but anyways, I may be wrong. So you have to check whether Aadhaar is such a kind of card mentioned in the budget. The second is an entity digi locker will be set up for the use of MSMEs, large business, and charitable trust. So these are the statements taken up directly from the budget. So. If you know it well and good, you can answer. Both the statements are correct. Only one is correct. Only two is correct, or neither one or two is correct. So uh, try to answer this question. And um, again, as I said, there is you are not going to lose any marks right now if you answer wrong. So make a wild guess. It's better to lose marks here than in your final exams. So which of the following statements are correct? Maybe both are correct or none. The next priority is what we are going to talk about. Linked to the MCQ, we'll get an answer here. It's unleashing the potential. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Unleashing the potential. The budget tries to address that we have a lot of potential. The the country, the sectors where various people have a lot of potential, but there is need to you know utilize that potential, and for that, the state support is needed. So there are various things which are introduced here. For example, Jan Vishwas Bill. Now, Jan Vishwas Bill is introduced for furthering the trust-based governance and amend 42 Central Acts. So there are there are various Central Acts, the 42 Central Acts which are talked about. So this particular bill talks about it. Now, without going in so much detail, you should know that what does it address to? It's a governance-based bill so that people can have trust. Obviously, in the citizen-centric governance, that trust factor is very important, and therefore this bill is there. then you have national data governance policy to unleash innovation and research by startups and academia now remember startups who will actually produce something academia is something which is related to research so you know there will be a national data governance policy and this will help startups and academia for research and innovation next point is center of excellence for artificial intelligence okay something which will always be remain or remaining in news for the next you know for 10 20 years until something new comes in is artificial intelligence few years back it was an issue of controversy today it is an issue of policy so that is how you have to you know kind of related in your main answer also from controversy to policy okay so center for excellence for artificial intelligence make uh artificial intelligence in india and make ai work for india look at this line the slogan is something which is very interesting to note make ai in india so it's make in india make ai in india make ai work for india so make you know you are you not only produce things which are uh, artificial intelligence based but it is also useful for the country so these three centers of excellence for ai will be set up so there will be three centers of excellence for ai artificial intelligence will be set up so remember this line from controversy to policy uh, you'll get a lot of opinion editorial articles related to artificial intelligence especially with all that which is happening in the world these days in the uh, realm of technology so you can uh, read many articles written by our technology experts from the indian express and you'll get good view of artificial intelligence also from the perspective of ethics as it is in your syllabus then we have a uh, simplification of know your customer proce uh, process so uh, you know there is a kyc process and in that process now they going to adopt a risk based instead of one size fits all approach so earlier it was ki sabke liye ek tarah ka kyc norm ho but now they will do a little change they'll make it a risk based then you have one stop solution for identity and address updating okay so this is for basically digi locker service Uh, and aadhar as foundation identity okay now come to this point hold on have some patience here we talk about aadhar but remember in the mcq we talk about aadhar in different sense okay so this is a one stop solution for identity and address updating digi locker service and aadhar as foundation entity this is for making identity but for common business identifier it's not aadhar 
it should be like it's a very it was a logical statement for business for banking purposes and everything you don't need aadhar as much as you need pan so that is the permanent account number that that card will be used as the common identifier for all digital systems of specified government agencies so you get the answer of that statement it was not aadhar but it was uh, pan okay so remember pan for everything all right remember this thing pan for everything basically for the digital systems so uh, this you have to remember so yahan pe basically dekhi aapke bank bank se related ki baat ho rahi hai kyc ki baat ho gayi aadhar ki baat ho gayi digi locker ki baat ho gayi and finally pan ki baat ho gayi so everything has been covered in this in these points then you have unified filing process for obviating the need of separate submission of same information to different government agencies so they will make the filing for process simpler all right now we have vivaad se vishwas one that is relief for msmes i told you that msmes is some is a area where the government is focusing on and so this vivaad se vishwas okay so they play around the terms isn't it so vivaad se vishwas is a relief for msmes in case of failure for msmes to execute contracts during the covid period 95% of these forfeited amount relating to bid or performance security will be returned to them by government and government undertakings now look during the covid times msmes was one of the sector which suffered the most to take that sector out of the world of peril or from the problems this particular vivaad se vishwas one is being offered as a relief to the msme sector so this you have to remember with vivaad se vishwas msme sector covid what happened to msme sector what the government is doing this is one of the things next point here is vivaad se vishwas 2 which is settling contractual disputes another important you know the uh, the uh, troubling point is related to contractual di disputes which is seen often uh, maybe you are not right now in that process but when you talk to people who are in this dispute it it might be troublesome so the government has uh, come up with vivaad se vishwas to this is a voluntary settlement scheme with standardized terms will be introduced remember it's a voluntary remember that word is important this will be done by offering graded settlement terms pending depending on pendency level of the dispute and finally we have reserve based based financing now what is reserve based financing the two important points here is input based to result based financing for better allocation of scarce resources so whatever resources which are very limited now how do you allocate them earlier it was based on input based okay jisme jitna input ho utna aap allocate kare wo resource okay whatever product requires how much resources you or input you base your financing based on on that particular thing but now it is based on result so from input to output so jiska output jyada hai jiska result jyada hai that will be used in you know uh, the uh, uh, the financing will be done accordingly of those scarce resources then we have re uh, things related to fintech service entity digi locker 5g service and something was which was very much in news because of the budget i remember people started talking about it was lab grown diamonds okay so uh, quickly let's talk about fintech services to enable more fintech services or innovative services the scope of documents available in digi lockers for individuals will be expanded okay so something which occurs to my mind is so many times you've talked about digi lockers okay so um, things related to it so maybe you can just do a little bit of research on what is digi locker okay then you have entity digi locker an entity digi locker will be set up for by the you for the use of msmes large business and charitable trust if i'm not wrong the statement was there in the mcq so see if it is correct then they have 5g services so much news of 5g last year isn't it uh, of the launches and everything so 100 labs for developing application using 5g services will be set up in engineering institutions in the engineering institutions that is in the educational colleges okay so 5g services ke labs banaye jayenge because once the engineers are trained only then they come out and they do work for the 5g companies isn't it so you need to have that infrastructural development in the colleges itself 
Then you have lab grown diamonds. Okay, lab grown diamonds is a very important topic. You should uh, read an explained article on lab grown diamonds. Probably I'll give you a link of that explained article. It is a technology and innovation driven energy sector with high employment potential. A research and development grant will be provided to one of the IITs for five years. So there's going to be a lot of work around lab grown diamonds and remember it mentioned that it's a technology and innovation driven emerging sector which has high employment potential. Okay, so ek teer se do nishane. Bohat sare kaam ho in fact that you're getting employment because it's an employment rich sector. It's a technology led and innovation, uh, innovation driven emerging sector. So this was basically chota mota all the like brief points in the priority four. Now, coming back to our practice, that is, we'll answer the question which we have asked before priority four. With reference to union budget, consider the following statement. Aadhaar will be used as a common identifier for all digital systems of specific government agency. Naiji, this is wrong because now we have seen it is PAN, not Aadhaar. Secondly, an entity DigiLocker will be set up for use by MSMEs, large business and charitable trust. This, to the best of my knowledge, is correct. So the correct answer here is only two. So the statement which is correct is the second statement. Before going to priority five, another MCQ, this is the easiest. Was too much in news, I remember we have done an article of, of our UPSC essentials on this particular topic. I am not giving a clue anymore, but it should be known to you. And it's an interesting topic. Which of the following schemes announced in budget 2023 is related to mangroves? Okay. And the options are Pranam, Prashad, Mishti, none of the other. Now, this is the question which I request all of you should answer in the comment box. Even if you have not heard about the stream, there is so much of hint already. Okay. So, uh, uh, try to answer and I'm sure a lot of you will get 100% correct. If you are getting it wrong, well, you are overusing your brain because certain questions in UPSC are asked, they are like uh, sweets to you, okay, they are direct. So uh, let's, let's talk about this particular priority. Now let's come to the last priority of today, by the way, it will not take you much time, but we are going slow so that you can retain what you see. Uh, remember, there's one thing to read but there's another important part of retention and revision is to view and watch. And that is the aim of this YouTube uh, of Indian Express, the uh, UPSC Essentials. We try to help you so that you can revise what you read, what you have read, what you have been taught by your teachers and what you have done through your self-study. So this is a kind of revision. Uh, so it will retain in your mind. So let's come to the last priority of today. That is priority five. Okay, this is mentioned in the budget, which talks about green growth. Now the government has been focusing on green growth. There's too much about climate, ecology. So this particular topic is not only relevant for your uh, economy per se, but also environment and ecology. Okay, so this is something which you should focus on. First and foremost, the green hydrogen mission. Okay, uh, from the Indian Express also, we've done videos, we've done articles on what is green hydrogen mission. So you should look into it, not only from the policy point of view also, but from, from the point of view of science. That why hydrogen and what is green hydrogen? Uh, for example, it's a gray hydrogen, for example. So you should know what is the difference, why is it different? But here in the budget, the green hydrogen mission facilitate transition of the economy to low carbon intensity, Target is to reach an annual production of 5 MMT by 2030. Please remember the year, the uh, target year to be achieved is 2030. So green hydrogen mission is something important for the exam point of view, not only for prelims, but also for mains. Okay. The next is battery energy storage system. So uh, developing capacity of 4000 MWH uh, that the ant will be supported with why viability gap funding another important term what is viability gap funding i know a lot of students are afraid of economy but you should not okay you have to focus on certain key terms and concepts questions sometimes are revolving around it so what is viability gap, gap funding by the way and how is it different from other fundings uh, i will love to answer this question but i want to see how you uh, try to answer it 
So how is it different from other funds? So this kind of battery energy storage system is being talked about. In this case, renewable energy ev uh, evacuation. This is an interstate transmission system for evacuation and grid integration of 13 gigawatt renewable energy from Ladakh. Now this becomes important because Ladakh is mentioned. Otherwise, I'm sure you will just uh, sniff through and forget about this point. This point. But when something is in, uh, specific to Ladakh is mentioned, so you should just go through this point once again. Renewable energy evacuation, interstate transmission system for evacuation and grid integration of 13 gigawatt renewable energy from Ladakh. Uh, why renewable energy is so much in you know important for Ladakh? Why Ladakh is so much in news these days? something which you should answer. Let's talk about another aspect that is Amrit Dharohar. This is to promote local communities unique conservation style for wetlands. Okay, so this I see it's a very potential question for exams. Amrit Dharohar, it is related to local communities unique conservation style for wetlands implementing in the next three years to encourage optimal use of wetlands. So wetlands has been, has been a focus not only of the government but also of the international agencies. Can you tell me how many wetlands we have in our country? Maybe uh, Ramsar sites, wetlands, all these. You know, this is the way you have to prepare for your exam. Pick up the keywords from the budget. Think about the basic concepts around it. What are wetlands, for example? That should be the first question should come to your mind. Then let us see what is the green credit program. Now this green credit program will be notified under the EPA or the Environmental Protection Act, the Environment Protection Act, and it induces behavioral change and incentivize environmentally sustainable and responsive action by companies, individuals, and local bodies. So not only by the individuals, it will you know, attempt to change your behavior with respect to the environment, okay? And not only the individuals, but also local bodies and companies. So this is something which is very important, you know, you can note it down and you can mention it whenever you're writing the government's effort towards environment. So basically what will come to your mind, the funds, the schemes, the initiatives, also this program, which does not only focus on individuals, but companies and local bodies. Then, as mentioned in the previous question, PM Pranam. Okay, now you see the scheme, you'll not know who's the beneficiary. Okay, it seems like a, you know, Pranam is a gesture of greeting, but what is it really related to here? Who is the beneficiary here? PM Program for Restoration, Awareness, Nourishment, you know, Amelioration of Mother Earth aim to incentivize states and union territories to promote alternate fertilizers and balanced use of chemical fertilizers. So something which you should keep in mind, this is related to something which you have not, not thought of, isn't it? It's related to fertilizers, it's related to chemical fertilizers and it's called pranam. Okay, so this is how sometimes contrary also will help you in learning. Then you have Gobardhan. Okay, so this is Galvanizing Organic Bio Agro Resource Dhan Scheme. 500 new ways to well plants under Gobardhan for promoting circular economy. This was a term very popular in the economic survey, I think uh, last year or last to last year. What is a circular economy? Something which you should talk about now. So like I was talking that you should know what is a wetland. You should know what is a circular economy. Okay, it could have simply be written as economy. But circular should give you a sense of, you know, renewing something, reviving something, recycling something. Is it really connected to circular economy? That's just a hint. It includes compressed biogas plants, that is CBG, urban plants, community or cluster-based plants. Okay, now we come to Bhartiya uh, Prakritik Kheti Bio Input Resource Center. So uh, this is... Uh, Another something related to you know uh, the agriculture, but it's related to fertilizers, chemicals, or bio input. So it gives you a hint of organic. Uh, let's see what it is. Ten thousand bio input resource centers will be set up. Okay, as I told you, micro fertilizers, pesticides, pesticides manufacturing network. Aim is that over next three years, in Salbaz, 
तीन साल तक गवर्नमेंट विल फैसिलिटेट वन करोड़ फार्मर टू अडॉप्ट नेचुरल फार्मिंग पार एन माई यूज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इट वॉज नेचुरल फार्मिंग सो नाउ यू शुड यू नो इवन आई लर्न फ्रॉम माई मिस्टेक सो नेचुरल फार्मिंग इज समथिंग विच शुड कम टू योर माइंड वेन यू टॉक अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर भारतीय प्राकृतिक खेती बायो इनपुट रिसोर्स सेंटर्स एंड फाइनली मिश्टी नो इट्स नॉट अबाउट मिठास फ्रॉम बेंगाल इट इज समथिंग रिलेटेड टू मैंग्रोव ओके सो इट्स मैंग्रोव इनिशिएटिव फॉर शोर लाइन हैबिटैट्स एंड टेंजेबल इनकम ओके तो मैंग्रोव को इतना बेटर कर दो कि वो मिठास आपको दे सो रिमेंबर इन दैट सेंट ऑल्सो एम फॉर मैंग्रोव एम फॉर मिश्टी सो आई थॉट दैट मे बी यू कैन आंसर दैट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दैट लिंक बट रिमेंबर द फोर्थ ऑप्शन वॉज नन ऑफ दब सो यू कैन ऑलवेज फॉल इन दैट ट्रैक सो मैंग्रोव प्लांटेशन अलॉन्ग द कोस्ट लाइन on and on the salt pan lands okay so there have to be a convergence of various funds and sources manarega campa fund and other sources by the way uh, i've already talked it in the, in my previous video that mangrove is very important for our country uh, specifically but also as an international initiative can you tell me what is that international initiative if i am not wrong we have covered this in the quiz show which all of you liked and that reminds me we will come up with a quiz show surely uh, covering various topics helping you in your revision so mangrove plantation is important for country for our country why and what is the international initiative around mangrove which was lot in news last year the second half of the last year so uh, this was the uh, topic of priority 5 where we uh, you know covered almost all the points in we talking about green growth coming to the mcq well it goes without saying which of the following schemes announced in budget 2023 is related to mangroves if this was a class all students would have shouted mishti so the correct answer here is c mishti and that is how we end today's uh, session we talked about the three priorities priority 4 priority 5 priority 6 we did a little change we answered the mcqs we placed the mcqs beyond before the priority so that we do a kind of a revision of what we are learning today in the video so the aim of these videos is to make your job simpler when it comes to budget we might also come up with other topics as per your suggestions Also remember there will be an article on you know the budget simplified and the budget quiz soon so you sh you should check the UPNC es essentials section of the Indian Express As I say always think smart work hard conquer your goal and also subscribe and like the YouTube channel of the Indian Express thank you very much